Hi guys, welcome to Bali's Tutor Professionals. I am Mr. Valentine, also known as Bali, and today we will be doing POA Paper 1, May June 2023. So let's see how good you all really did. But before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe. The more you like and subscribe, the more students I get to help with content like this. And don't forget to hit the, the bell, it's somewhere across there. So every time we post new content, you will be notified. Now, anyone who's interested in our lessons classes, feel free to contact us here or on TikTok, Bali underscore S, or Instagram, Bali Suter Professionals. We actually have a bootcamp for POA coming up for those who are now starting POA or for those who are writing exams next year. So check that out. All right. Now let's start. POA, paper one, May, June, 2023. Alright guys, so what I did, I put in the answers earlier. So if you just want to scroll through to see the answers, you could do that. Um, but what I'll be doing, I'll be explaining how I got each of the answers for you, alright? So let's start with number one. The total credit of the bank column of a three-column cash book is greater than the total debit. This the most likely reason for this. So when you spend more money than you get, that is called an overdraft, right? It's a facility that the bank allows you where you could spend more money than you actually have in the bank account and you'll be owing the bank. That's how I got A for number one. There was an overdraft. Number two, the statement of financial position in the statement, expenses owing will be listed as, so liabilities are things you owe. So that's a dead giveaway. Expenses owing would be a current liability because they have to pay it back within less than a year. Number three, Mar Maharaj bought two cases of expired mushrooms yield, from B&B supermarkets and returned them. In Maharaj's books, this will be recorded as a journal entry of purchases returns. So he purchased the goods and he's returning them, hence purchase returns. Also called return outwards, the goods are going out of the company. If the goods were coming into the company, then it would be returned inwards. Number four. Ishani's, nobody have regular names? Ishani's cafeteria does not keep a complete set of accounting records. The bookkeeper has provided the following information. Car sales, blah, 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 blah. What is the balance on the sales ledger control account? So the sales ledger control account is all about credit sales. So we're leaving out cash sales completely. We are looking at opening account receivable, credit sales, and cash received from account receivable. All right, so let me draw a quick T account on the side here so you can get an idea. So this would be our control account. Can you see his ledger, right? See his ledger control account. So the balance brought down, the open balance will be on the debit side, 700. That's our balance brought down. Then our credit sales, anything that's increasing the amount we owe will go on the debit side. Anything that's decreasing the amount we owe will go on the credit side. Credit sales, if we sell stuff on credit, it's increased how much people owe us. So that goes on the debit side. And then if the, if the account receiver will pay us the money that they owe us, then that decreases the amount that they owe us. So cash received. We'll go on the credit side. And the balance now will be the total of the bigger side, which is the total of the debit side, minus the total of the credit side. So that's 1,700, 1,000 plus 700, minus 1,250. And that would give us 450. That's how we got B, 450. Let's continue. Number five, accounting is the process of one, gathering and recording information. Yep. Providing information which influences decisions. Yes. 
interpreting and reporting financial information. Yes, so that's all three. One, two, and three. So number five is D. Number six, which of the following actions should a company take if it is likely to incur a bad debt? That's why companies create a provision for bad debts to provide for such losses. Hence the name provide provision, right? So the answer is A. Number seven, which of the following will be shown in the, in the appropriation account of a limited liability company? Transfer to reserves, yes. Director's remuneration or remuneration, think of it as a big word for salary. That's an expense. It would go in the income statement, not the appropriation account. Retain earnings, yes. So the answer for seven would be one and three. Number eight, Merrill Industries operates on a 40-hour work shift per hour. Overtime is paid at time and a half. So if he's working a 40-hour shift, and that means anything after 40 hours will be overtime. Employees are paid $50 an hour. What is his gross pay? What is the gross pay of an employee who works for a 49-hour week? So the first 40 hours would be considered his basic hours. So that would be 40 multiplied by 50, which is 2,000. And then the nine hours extra, because he worked 49 hours, would be his overtime. So it will be 9 multiplied by 50. And since they said it's time and a half, they multiplied by 1 and a half, or 1.5. And that will give you 675. So his total would be 200 plus 675, which gives us the 2,675. Hence why the answer is D. Number 9. A trader had opening capital of 3,900. If his drawings are 900 and his closing capital is 4,860, what was his net profit? This question repeats so often. A lot of these questions repeat often, actually, because CXC is, and you could say Mr. Ballantyne, a.k.a. Bali, said it. CXC is lazy. No watching the camera. CXC is lazy. All right. So the formula is this. Opening capital. Add net profit, less drawings, gives you closing capital. So they said opening capital here was 3,900. We don't know what net profit is. We know drawings is 900. And our closing capital is equal to 4,860. So whatever we add our net profit to, to whatever we add to our opening capital, sorry, when we minus drawings, we get closing stock. Let's find out what number, what number we get when we add net profit to opening capital. Because whatever that number is, when we minus drawings, we get closing stock, closing capital. So we're gonna add back our drawings. So 4,860 plus 900. That will give us 5,760, right? So we know opening capital plus net profit gives us 5,760. So to calculate net profit, you're going to take that 5,760 and minus opening capital from it. Because you know opening capital plus net profit gives us 5,760. And that will give us 1860. So let me go through it one more time, just in case. So we know opening capital plus net profit minus drawings gives us closing capital. So what we did, we know opening capital plus net profit. When we minus drawings, we get closing capital. So we added back the drawings to get the number we get. When we get opening capital, plus net profit. So opening cap plus net profit gave us closing capital and then we add plus the drawings, right? Because we add back the drawings. So 4,860 4, plus 900 gives us, gave us 5,760. So from there, 
we know opening capital is 3,900. So 3,900 plus net profit gives us 5,760. Basic algebra, we make net profit the subject of the formula. We carry 3,900 to the next side, so it becomes minus. So net profit is equal 5,760 minus 3,900, which will give you 1,860. That's how the answer is C. All right. I explained that one twice because I know some people might get some trouble catching that answer. Number 10, which are the following items are capital expenditure. So capital expenditure is when you buy fixed assets or you make improvements on fixed assets. So the value of the fixed asset, asset increases. So in this case, the answer is going to be D, purchase of machinery. Machinery is the only fixed asset here that's being bought. Number 11, a business receives $5,000 for rent revenue and deposits this amount into the bank account. Which will this transaction, where, how will this transaction be recorded? So assets, when they increase your debit, when they decrease your credit, they get money. That means your bank account, which is an asset, is increasing. So you have to debit your bank account. And revenue is always credited. So we debit in bank, we have to credit revenue. But even if we did not know that, we know that every transaction has a debit and an equal credit. So if we debit in bank, automatically we have to credit rent revenue. So the answer for 11 is D. And we move in. Number 12, this question probably has come every year. They don't even change the man name. They don't even change the position of the answer. K Khan, a debt of A and B enterprises, settles his debt of 120 less 2.5% discount by check. How should the double entry be recorded in the books of A and B enterprises? So, remember when your assets increase your debit, right? We are getting paid money, so our bank is increasing, so we're going to debit bank the amount of money we are being, we are being paid which is 120 less the discount, which is, which is equal to 117. Expenses are always debited. Discount allowed is considered an expense. And since the expense is two, since discount allowed is 2.5% of 120, which is $3, we are going to debit discount allowed $3. Now, KCAN no longer owes us $120. So to show that, we will credit KCAN's account 120. That's how we got C. So number 12 is C. Number 13. Partnerships are formed for the purpose of one, combining capital from different partners, yeah. Benefiting from different skills and specializations, yeah. Sharing ideas, experiences, and responsibilities, yeah. So all three. So number 13 is D. 14. Control accounts are kept in order to assist management into all control systems, control accounts, bank reconciliation, suspense accounts, all of them are done to help locate errors. So number 14 is A. Number 15, what's the value of opening stock? So let's look at the formula again. And you will know this formula if you know your, if you know your income statement. Opening stock or inventory. Same thing. Add net purchases. Minus closing stock will give you your cost of goods sold. Your net purchases is purchases, add carriage and odds, less return outwards. Let's calculate net purchases first. Purchases was 5,000. Carriage was 500. Return outwards or purchases returns was 1,000. So that would equal 4,500. So let's come back here. We don't know what our opening stock is, but we know net purchases is now 4,500. And when we add opening stock, net purchases, and we minus closing stock of 1,000, we get in our cost of goods sold, which is 5,500. 
to open in stock, add net purchases, minus close in stock, is equal to cost of goods sold. So what number when we add it to 4,500 and we minus 1,000, you'll get 5,005. So we're going to do some algebra again. Make open and stock the subject of the formula. We're going to take that 4,500 and carry it to the next side of the equal sign. If it becomes negative, you're going to move the minus 1,000 to the next side, makes it positive. So open and stock will be equal to 5,500 instead of plus 45, minus 4,500. And instead of minus a thousand, plus a thousand. So that would give us opening stock would be equal to fifty five hundred minus forty five hundred. That's a thousand plus a thousand. That's two thousand. Opening stock is B two thousand. So I did it like that for you to see exactly how you get it working. But if you understand the question, I'm pretty sure you can work it out even faster, right? Number 16, cooking with gas. The total of the sales day book. So the, so the journals are, trans, are posted to the ledgers, right? And the ledger is where the T accounts will be located. So the sales ledger has all your T accounts for your debtors, right? So the sales day book balance would not go to the sales ledger. The purchases ledger has all the T accounts for your creditors. So your sales day book balance won't go there as well. The general ledger has all the T accounts for your real accounts and nominal accounts. So the sales day book, which is your journal, the balance would go to your sales account and the general ledger. Because the sales account is a nominal account, accounts that you cannot touch. So the answer would be C, the credit side of the sales account, because sales is always credited. So for those who don't know my teaching yet, I teach how to do double entry like this. We use the acronym PRIDE. PRIDE stands for Purchases, Return Inwards, Drawings and Expenses. P-R-I-D-E. Those accounts are always debited. Purchases, Return Inwards, Drawings and Expenses. PRIDE, always debited. All the other accounts, which will be Sales, Return Outwards, and Revenue accounts, are always credited. And then we have your rules for assets, liabilities, and capital. Let's move on. Number 17. A trader received an invoice of 4,000 less 25% trade discount. Subsequently, he returned one eighth of the goods. What amount will be entered in the return outwards account? So it was 4,000. As soon as you buy, buy the goods, you get that 25% trade discount. You activate it one time. 25% of 4,000 4, is 1,000. So you remain with 3,000. And then you return one eighth of the goods. So it would be 3,000 multiplied by one eighth which would give you 375. That's how we got A. Number 18. Oh gosh, this question has come often. Mr. Abel and Mrs. Blue purchased goods on credit from Mr. Kane valued at $50 and $75 respectively. Another customer paid cash for goods amounting to 550. Mr. Kane took goods at cost for himself amounting to 500. So if you all follow me on TikTok, you all would have seen the video I did on the paper one accounts questions that come very often, and this one was on it. As a matter of fact, just about every question featured in that video came on this exam. All of these will be considered sales except the amount Mr. Kane took out. This amount Mr. Kane took out will be considered drawings. So you're just going to add 500, sorry, 50 plus 75 plus 550. And that will give you 675C. Number 19, which are the following accounts and nominal accounts? So they are, split, they are personal accounts. Those are accounts for people and businesses, so your debtors and creditors. They are real accounts. Those are tangible accounts, things you could touch. And then they are nominal accounts, things that you cannot touch. Wages and rent are the two nominal accounts here. So the answer for number 19 is A. Number 20. 20 to 22 refers to the following information. Number 20, what's the value of the non-current assets? So we're going to add up all our non-current assets, which will be furniture, 
motor vehicle and premises. Those are the assets that you expect to last longer than a year. 10,000 plus 12,000, that's 22,000. Plus 20,000, that's 42,000. So number 20 is C. Number 21, which of, which of the following resources could be considered to be the most permanent? So the one that is hardest to sell. Think of it like that. And that would obviously be your premises, the most expensive one, right? Number 22, which of the following arrangements shows the current assets in order of liquidity? The one that is easiest to change the cash would go first. So obviously cash has to go first. So C and D are already out. Cash in hand, cash at bank, where you just have to take out the money, and then accounts receivable, because you have to collect the money from them. So the answer for 22 will be A, because cash at bank is more liquid than accounts receivable. Number 23, when a proprietor withdraws cash or other assets from the business, what does effect does the, what effect does this have on the business drawings or capital account? So if you take out drawings, your drawings will increase, and drawings always decreases your capital. So the only answer that could work here is B. The capital account is decreased. Number 24. Next question I repeat often. Mrs. Smith does not keep proper records. She began her business with $10,000 in the bank. She uses a vehicle and building with $6,000 and $15,000 as part of the business. Customers owe her $4,000. So all of those things will be assets. The 10000 in the bank account, the vehicle, the building, and the receivables, the amount of money that people owe her. So when we add up that, we'll get her total assets, which is 35000 Then she had creditors owed 2000 so her liability, and $1,500 in drawings, because she withdrew $1,500 for personal use. They want in her closing capital. Capital is assets minus liabilities. So 35000 Minus 2,000 will give us 33,000. But remember, as we just said in the question above, drawings reduces your capital. So you have to minus drawings. So 33,000 minus 1,500 will give us 31,500. So 24 is C. 25, which of the following outcomes will result in opening inventory of raw materials are added to net purchases of raw materials? So opening stock, plus net purchases gives you cost of goods available for sale. Opening stock of raw materials plus net purchases of raw materials gives you the cost of raw materials available for use. You have to minus the closing stock to get cost of raw materials used. So 25 is D. 26, our next question that comes very often, the working capital of A. Young and Sons is 5,500. What is the, um, and the value of current assets is 16,500. What is total current liability? So working capital is equal to current assets minus current liability. We know working capital is 16,500. And that is equal to current assets, which is 15,000. No, sorry. Working capital is 15,500. And that is equal to current assets, which is 16,500 minus current liability. So how much you have to minus from 16,005 to get 15,005? The answer is A, 1,000. Number 27. The article, an article is subject to a 20% trade discount. Its list price is 600. What is its sales price? So its sale price would be 600 minus the 20% trade discount. 20% of 600 is 120. 600 minus 120 will give you 480. So 27 is B. Number 28 refers to the following summary of receipts and payments for the month of the March of March for an NGO. The cash balance would be, so we're just going to add up all the money we get minus the money we spend. So the money we get. Subscriptions received 300, not rent, not purchases, not postage, proceeds from book sale 250. So that's 550. Now let's minus the money we spent. 550 minus the purchase of games and equipment 150. That's 400. Rent paid is 60. 400 minus 60 is 340. Postage of circulars 20. 340 minus 20, 320. That's how 28 is C. 
29. Now, this question repeats across subjects. It repeats in both POA and OA. This, and you your cannot tell me sexy, not lazy. P Hawk has a manufacturing business. The cost of raw materials is 1900 Rates and rent total 2000 and factory wages amount to 2500 The number of units produced is 640 What is the cost of one unit? So you add up the total cost, which will be all of these costs combined, which comes up to 6400 And then you divide it by the total number of units to get the cost for one unit. 6400 divided by 640 would give you C10. Number 30, which are the following entries of a three-column cash book is a contra entry. So a contra entry is when one transaction affects, a, affects the cash column and the bank column. Now remember, every transaction must have a debit and an equal credit. So if cash is being debited, bank has to be credited. If, if bank is being debited, cash has to be credited. So the only answer that could work here is A, debit cash, credit bank. Number 31, what is the balance as per cash book? This is a bank, what is the balance as per bank statement, sorry? This is a bank reconciliation question. And the balance per cash book is your opening cash balance, add unpresented checks minus late lodgement. Opening cash, add unpresented checks, less late lodgement. And that would give us our bank statement balance. So opening cash is 560. Unpresented checks is 120. That's 680 when you add them. And then a minus late lodgement of 150. So 680 minus 150 will give us 530. And that's how the answer is D. Number 32. Rose contributed 7,000 in cash and a motor vehicle worth 3,000 to the partnership. So the money that, that she invested and assets that she invested into the business would be her capital. So you're going to debit 7,000 cash because your cash increased, debit motor vehicle 3,000 because your motor vehicle increased, and then you're going to credit her capital because once she invested into the business, it's to be considered capital. And the capital would be the 7,000 plus the 3,000, 10,000. That's how 32 is C. Number 33 now. You're almost done. You're almost finished. Item 33 refers to the following balances that appear in the ledger of Mrs. G. Dalton. What is the total of the trial balance? So let's see what will be on the debit side and what will be on the credit side. So your assets and everything that is always debited will be on the debit side. So machinery, inventory, and remember I told you all about pride, Purchases, written in wash drawings and expenses, those are always debited. So purchases would be on the debit side. 4,000 plus 3,000 plus 1,000 is 8. Capital is on the credit side. Sales is on the credit side. That also equals to 8. So the total of the child, child balance would be 8,000. D. Number 34. What is the cost of goods produced? A manufacturing question. So you add up all your prime costs and your indirect costs. And then you add opening work in progress and minus closing work in progress. So 3,000 plus 3,002 plus 5,000, that's 11,200. Then you add opening work in progress, which is 12,800, minus closing work in progress, which will bring you back down to 11,100. So the answer for 34 would be C. 35, inventory bought from M. Smith on credit but posted into N. Smith's account. How would this transaction be corrected in the journal? So this answer here is actually wrong. This 35 answer here is wrong. So what you have to do, so this is what was supposed to happen. You were supposed to debit purchases and credit M. Smith, but it, that didn't happen. It was entered into N. Smith's account. So what you have to do, because it was entered on the credit side of N. Smith, you're going to have to debit N. Smith to take it out and then credit M. Smith where it is supposed to be. So you have to minus from the credit side of N. Smith. To minus from the credit side of N. Smith, you will debit N. Smith's account to cancel it out. And then you credit M. Smith's account where it was supposed to be in the first place. So the answer for 35 is D. All right?
Number 36. So remember that, guys, 35, the answer is wrong on this board here. The answer is D. 36. Which of the following items on a statement of financial position would differ most in presentation when comparing the books of a company and the books of a sole trader? So the answer here would be capital D, right? So in the sole trader, the capital account has um, capital that start add um, net profit minus drawings. In the company account, you have authorized share capital, issued share capital, general reserves, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a lot of differences, right? Number thirty-seven. Ann Williams is a petty casher. If she has a float of 200 and she, and she spends 180, how much should she be reimbursed? So if she spends 180, she has to get back 180. So the answer would be B. Number 38, a businessman bought a new company. Remember, this is D, 35 is D. Don't forget I told you all that. So I know you're seeing it on the board. I'll see it, I'll see it again. 35 is D. Number 38, the businessman bought a new, a new computer for 6000 He paid $4,000 cash and traded his old computer. So when assets increase, we debit. When assets decrease, we credit. So our new computer is increasing by 6000 So we are going to debit it 6000 We are spending 4000 cash. So our cash has to credit 4000 And our old computer also has to credit because we are giving it away. So for the answer for 38 would be D. Number 39. Let me just erase this. All right. Number 39. A company's rent expense account had an opening balance of 2000 During the year, 6000 was paid for rent. So it had an opening balance. Remember, rent is always debited. It had an opening balance of 2000 and then you paid 6000 so you're going to debit your rent 6000 because again rent is an expense expenses are always debited so to have a closing balance they said at the end of the year to have a closing debit balance of 1500 so for your balance brought down to be 1500 that means your balance carry down had to be 1,500, right? And your balance carry down is always on the opposite side of your balance brought down. If your balance brought down is on the debit side, that means your balance carry down is 1,500. The amount of rent expense recorded for the year, the amount transferred to the income statement, would be the balancing figure here. The amount that is missing to make both sides equal. Income statement balance. And that would be the debit side, which is 8,000 in total, minus the credit side, which is 1,500 right now. 8,000 minus 1,500 will give you 6,500. And that's where the answer is B, 39. Number 40, which of the following financial documents shows the net earnings of a business? And that we know is our income statement. That shows how much profits and losses we make. Number 41, the gross profit under FIFO is, so they give us our closing stock under FIFO, which is 5,000. So that means cost of goods sold would be our purchases minus our 5,000 closing stock, 5,000, right? 10,000 minus 5,000 is 5,000. So gross profit will be, 40, will be sales minus cost of goods sold. So 45,000 minus 5,000, which is 40,000. When it's under AFCO, AFCO closing balance is 3,000, closing inventory. So cost of goods sold will be 10,000 minus 3,000, which is 7,000. So sales minus cost of goods sold, 45,000 minus 7,000 will give us 38,000. So 42 is C. It's that simple. Number 43, in preparing its financial accounts, a business omitted return inwards. Which of the following items will be affected by this omission? So your net sales, sales minus return inwards is net sales. So your net sales will be affected. 
Your gross profit is net sales minus cost of goods sold. So if your net sales is affected, then automatically your gross profit is affected. Net purchases has nothing to do with return and words, so it would not be affected. So the answer for 43 is B, 1 and 3. Number 44. Karen and Gart, partners in a business, share profits and losses a ratio of 2 to 1. So Karen is 2, Gart is 1. They make profit of 3,600. How much would Karen get? So Karen will get 3,600 multiplied by 2 thirds. How did I get 2 thirds? Remember, we said Karen was 2. And to get the 3, the, denom the, the denominator, I add up the two numbers in a ratio. 2 plus 1 is 3. So Karen gets 2 thirds. And that, who is 1, will get 1 third. So 3,600 multiplied by 1 over 3. So that, so Karen gets 2,400. And that gets 1,200. The answer is A. Number 45, in the books of a partnership, the salaries of the partners should be, so they would be on the EBIT appropriation account, the debit side. If it's a current account, the credit side. So in this case, they, they had credit or the appropriation account. That's wrong. Credit on the partner's current account, that's correct. So the answer for 45 is D. Number 46, question that comes extremely often, they want us to calculate capital. Our accounting equation, assets minus liabilities equal capital. So total assets, which will be 200,000 plus 100,000, that's 300,000, minus total liabilities, which will be 60,000 plus 150,000, which is 210 will give us 90,000 capital. So total assets minus total liabilities will give us B, 90,000. You're almost finished. 47, which are the following list of activities show the correct order of the stages of your accounting cycle. So it's collection of source documents, journalizing, posting to the ledger, trial balance, income statement, balance sheet. So in the one that's in order here is journalizing, posting to the ledger, trial balance. C. Number 48, Mr. Ram, a shoemaker, bought a motor vehicle for $11,000 cash. I don't know why him being a shoemaker is relevant, but hey, he's make shoes. In recording this transaction, he should. So your motor van is increasing, so you're going to debit your assets, which is your motor van. Your cash is decreasing when assets decrease your credit. So you're going to debit motor van, credit cash. So the answer is A, number 49. The issue, the issue was fully subscribed. How much capital did the company raise? So they had ordinary shares of 200000 with $2 each and preference shares of 10000 with $5 each. So if they sell all of that, that would be 200000 ordinary shares at $2 each, which will work out to 400000 and 10,000 preference shares at $5 each, which would work out to 10,000 by $5, 50,000. Add them up and you get 450,000, so the answer is D. Number 50. They want us to calculate the total provision for bad debts. So all we have to do, we're gonna take 3% of 6,000, so 3% multiply by 6,000, which will be 180. Then 2% 2 of 4,000, which will be 80. And then 1% of 8,000, which will also be 80. And then we're going to add it up to get our total provision. And that will come up to 340. So the answer is B, 340. Boom. 51. A photocopy machine valued at 5,000 is depreciated at 10% per annum using the straight line method. What is its book value after two years? So using a straight line method means you take 10% the depreciation rate and multiply it by the cost of the asset, not the value. If you're using a value, that would be the reducing balance method. So another thing to note, when it's the straight line method, depreciation remains the same every year. So when we calculate depreciation here, which is 10% of 5,000, and we get 500, 
every year it's going to depreciate by 500. So if it depreciated for two years, that would be 500 twice, which is 1,000. So the new value would be 5,000 minus that 1,000, which is 4,000. So the answer for 51 is A. 52, what is the bank balance in the receipts and payments account of K and friends for the year ended to the 1st of July, 2022? So to calculate this, we are going to add up all the money we get and minus all the money we spend. So I'm going to put I next to income and put E next to expenses. So our bank balance, we had a 700 balance. I'm going to put I next to that. Purchase refreshments, that will be an expense. Purchase furniture, that will be a capital expense. Proceed from raffle, that is money we get, that is the income. Inventory, that's not money, that is just the goods, so we're leaving that just the, right there. Donations to charity, so we're giving money to charity, so that will be expense. Depreciation of furniture, that is not a financial expense. That's just about fixed asset losing value, so we're leaving that out. Sale of equipment, that's money we're getting, so we call that an income. So we're going to add all our I's minus our E's. 700 plus 1,500, that's 2,200, plus 600, that's 2,800. Now we're going to minus our E's. 2,800 minus these two 500s, that will give us 1,800. Minus this 200, that will give us 1,600. So the answer for 52 is B, 1,600. So remember, we're leaving out inventory and depreciation because both of those have nothing to do with the amount of money we have. And the receipts and payments account is all about the amount of money we have. Consider it the cash book for nonprofit organizations. Number 53, what is the total value of assets? So all we have to do is add up our assets, which will be the motor vehicles, the receivables, and the building. 2000 plus 2000 plus 10,000 will give us 14,000. The answer for 53 is C. Number 54, to which account should depreciation on motor vehicles be transferred? So this will be considered an expense. And expenses are lo located in the income statement, specifically the profit and loss section. So the answer for 54 will be C, profit and loss. Number 55, which of the following accounting entries should be made if goods are sold on credit? So remember I told you all, Pride stands for purchases, return inwards, joints, and expenses. Those are always debited. Everything else, sales, return outwards, and revenue are always credited. So if we sell goods on credit, which is sales, we have to credit sales. So one of the answers has to be credit sales. So the answer could only be A or D. Now what's the next side? So once no money passes, it cannot go in the cash account. All right? If we bought it on credit, that means we have to put it into the account of the person who is owing us money, which is considered an account receivable. So instead of debiting cash because no money was spent, no money was earned, we are putting it into the receivables account to show that this person now owes us money for that sale. So the answer for 55 is D. 56, a company sells 5,000 10% preference shares and at $5 each. The company will pay out dividends of, so that percentage there is the percentage of dividends to be paid. Preference shares will always have the percentage of dividends to be paid in its name. So if it, if it had 5,000 preference shares at $5 each, that will be a total of 5,000 shares at $5, $5 each, 25,000. And if dividends are 10%, it would be 10% of 25,000, which is 2,500. That's how the answer is B. Number 57 and 58 refers to this information. And the 57 is asking, what is the total value of statutory deductions? So statutory deductions are deductions are, that are required by law. We have no choice but to do it. And that would be, in this case, our national insurance and our income tax, right? Sales commission is not a tax and credit union deductions is by choice. 
So the answer would be 1500 plus 250, 1750. And then they want to know what is our total wages. <clears throat> so we're going to add up our total income and minus our expenditure. So our total income in this case will be our cross wages. There's no overtime. We have commission that we got. Sales men commission of 300. And then we're going to minus our, our deductions, which will be national insurance, income tax, and our credit union deductions. The gross wages was 10,000. <clears throat> Salesman commission was 300. That's 13, that's 10,300. Now, then we minus our national insurance of 250. Our income tax of 1500. And our credit union deductions of 2500. Which will make our net pay when we do this transaction, we will get 6050. So the answer for 58 would be A, 6050. Number 59. Carriage inwards and outwards are classified as, so you cannot be two. You cannot be classified as two types of account. You could either be a personal account, a real account, or a nominal account. Personal accounts are accounts for people and businesses. So if I have somebody owing me money and I open an account for them, that would be a personal account. Real accounts are tangible accounts, things you could touch like furniture, equipment, cash. And nominal accounts are things that you cannot touch, like rent wages or carriage inwards and carriage outwards so the answer would be two only nominal accounts and finally our last question they want to know our total indirect costs so let's see Re this refers to the following information extracted from the records of md limited factory rent indirect costs so yeah depreciation indirect costs Depreciation, no, oh, 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 depreciation of office machinery is not an indirect cost because office machinery have nothing to do with the factory. So it's not an indirect cost. Depreciation and factory machinery, indirect cost. Factory insurance, indirect cost. Salesman commission, this is not a cost, so it's not an indirect cost. And then lubricants for the factory machinery, indirect cost. So this answer is actually wrong as well. You see why I must look at it work properly? So the answer would be 2,000 plus 7,000, that's 9,000, plus 6,000, that's 15,000, plus 5, 15,005. The answer for 60 would be A, 15,005. See what happens when you don't read the question properly and you just rush through? So don't do like me, guys. Read the question properly, all right? And that brings us to the end. So I hope you all learned something. If there's anything you did not understand, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on all platforms. I'm on TikTok, Bali underscore S. I'm on Instagram, Bali's Tutor Professionals. All right, guys? If you all need information on our lessons classes, feel free to reach out. If you all need information on anything at all, feel free to reach out. All right? I hope this was helpful. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Have a good one. Stay smart. Don't forget to check the professionals if you ever need assistance.